We're back again. That's great. Patrice Buidibeda once again for Panasonic Live at IFA 2012 here in Berlin. This segment will be dedicated to Lumix. And as you should know by those who have been watching us uh, for the last uh, few hours, when it comes to Lumix and uh, I need an expert, it's Mark that I will call. Mark. Hi, Patrice. Good and afternoon. You're, yeah, you're equipped with an I'm tablet PC. I'm equipped with just a like smart I tablet here. Oh, um, you already... Oh. Kevin is, there, uh, Kevin is there as well. Kevin How are you doing? Kevin is there as well. Now, uh, what's happening here is that you can probably see ourselves on the, on the screen. Yes. Uh, this is an app from Lumix called the Lumix Link app. Uh, and this basically is controlled to the new Lumix SZ5 that Kevin's holding. So I can actually take a picture of us now yep. with this tablet. Then why don't you... Shall I do it? So on, basically, I can zoom in. There we go, I'm going to zoom into my hair, and I can zoom back out again. So I'm actually controlling the camera here. <laughs> that's, that's there a we scary go. One. Just zoom and let it back out. Wanted dead or alive, rather dead than alive. So we have a uh, lot, of, lot of interference here, but basically we can zoom well, that's the back reason, out. Um, th th by the way, this is the reason why I do have the scent mic right now, because my <laughs> microphone even is getting some interferences. But and look at that, there we go. So we dropped out, so uh, we'll go back in again. So. While we're doing that, we can play back with the device. So right. any photographs that we took earlier, we can play back. So uh, let me just come out of that and show everybody the Lumix Link app at the top. So let's go back into that. And it'll connect up to the camera in a second. So while that's doing that, this app is available to download for um, Android and uh, iOS. There we go. So there's some snaps we uh, took earlier. Uh, that's, Actually, uh, you took a snap to of us, but without me. No. Well, we're going to do that in a second. So. I'm going to say OK on that. And in a second, there we go. It's getting a live view from the cam camera. So again, uh, you can zoom in, zoom out with the camera. And I'm going to take, hopefully in a second, a photograph. No. No, it's not going to take a photograph. You've got to hurry, because I think nope. Kevin, Arms, not. Kevin Arm is just about to fall off. No, it looks like we've got a lot of interference here. But let me just go back out, go in. Just to show you that it does work here. This happens during a live stream, yeah. so we've got, look, don't get confused. Everybody turn their smart devices off. But to be honest, we already we, we took once a picture that way. There we go. I'm going to quickly do it. There we go. Quickly. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Do we look we'll, surprised? I think we we'll, kind of look surprised, don't we? We'll, we'll delete that one. But we can play back. Um, obviously, in the home, you'll have uh, no issues here. And then, look, let's play back that fantastic photograph. My wife's going to love that. <laughs> We kind of um, look surprised. And what we can do now is, uh, we, well, we could then put my finger on the image itself. If you can look around the edge of the screen, I can either send it to our Lumix Club, which is a cloud-based service where we can uh, hold 1,000 images for 30 days. I can also then send it to social networking sites such as Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. So I can edit it through those software, mm -hmm. uh, that bit of software, and then send it and share it with our family and friends as well. So I can pretty much like uh, customize the frame around. You can, yeah, customize it. You can do the spot little focus and all that kind of stuff. So you can edit it without having to actually use the camera. Okay. So um, also on top of that, you can actually tag uh, the GPS element of the camera and uh, change the settings as well. So that's just one element of uh, the new Lumix Link app. Just one that means you have uh, ah, some more in store. I do. It, do, I, do I hear like an echo of myself within the hall here? Is that possible? Just, just wondering. Yes, I am. Hello. 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 Great. Love that. Um, the other element is I can now take a photograph and send it directly to the PC. So same camera again, but not the uh, physical same camera. Um, I'm going to just take this out. So just to prove just that this prove is that wireless. This. So uh, this cord, which is still attached there, is just for se security purposes. Yeah, and the other one is a charger. So, Patrice, I'm going to take a photograph of you. Oh, stop it. Okay, so uh, I'm now going to turn that off. Put the charger back in. Stop it, I'm shy. Wait a, wait a minute, does that look better? Okay. okay, now what it's actually doing, on the back of the unit itself, it's flashing red. Uh, and in a second, it should flash blue, or stationary blue, and then it flashes. And that's telling me that now I've set a folder up on the Windows PC here, the Panasonic uh, Toughbook. Okay, and in a second, when it starts flashing, wirelessly, it's now sent that photograph of you, Patrice. And there we go, directly to the P to PC. Fantastic. So we'll just leave that on there. And then the other aspect is, 
Now, I believe you have a Vieira television at home, don't you? Yes, I do, actually, a VT20. Um... Oh, I thought it was a VT50, sorry. But what you can do is this. No, you're right, Mark. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's a pity that I don't have a VT50. Okay. I should have a VT50. And there this we is go. Gonna Another nice photograph of you, Patrice. Very smart on this one right now, me while talking. Let me okay, this is gonna what be I'm great. now going to do is uh, playback. So I'll put the camera back on. Oh, let me guess. You're just about to share that on the television screen? Uh -huh, the maybe, worst out of the three? Maybe. So what I'm going to do, press playback. So you can probably see it on the camera there. Press the Wi-Fi button. Select wireless TV playback. So all this is on the same network. So there we go. DT50 in this case. So let's select yes. Okay. Takes a little bit of uh, time, a couple of seconds to actually find the unit, especially in this arena. There's a lot of uh, things going on. It's going to send it directly to the television. There we go. Voila. Yes. Cool. cool. It, don't they look handsome? You can also then, with the camera, now I'm controlling this via the camera, no TV remote control or anything like that. I can go left. Uh-huh. And there's some earlier photographs as well. So I can now do a slideshow. Really? All of that. Can you also have a delete show for this last <laughs> picture there? Would that be possible? <laughs> I would okay. beaucoup appreciate that. There we go. So that's the Lumix SZ5, all the different connectivity wirelessly. Um, it tags GPS on, from your mobile phone or tablet device as well. So amazing fun, wireless in the home. Well, well, outside. But, but thank you for showing me like three options out of I only can use like two. As yeah, apparently with my so VT20, I won't be able to do that. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well, then let's see what we have here um, consider, concerning questions, as the first one is going to come by Pia. And she would like to know, I upload phot photographs to social networking sites. What Panasonic cameras uh, does this feature? Okay, yeah, uh, the SZ5 is key to that. So what we can do with that, as we uh, said earlier, you can take the photograph with your Android or iOS device, uh, so your smart devices, connected wirelessly to the camera. Once you've taken that f uh, photograph, and uh, let's not forget the photograph from the camera is high resolution. It's a Lumix camera with a Leica lens as well. Right. So you're going to get really high quality. And then when you select playback on the um, actual uh, Android device, you put your finger on the photograph, and then you can send it to various uh, applications that you have on your tablet. But so wirelessly is the SZ5 the only one? It's that the only one at the moment that does that, yeah. But yep. this is just the beginning as we talked uh, about it yesterday. I really see this will be a great feature also to be included, uh, for example, in the G-Series. I mean, we talked about a photo uh, to a to photographer, professional photographer, who uh, paid us a visit yesterday. And uh, he just told us like a very adventurous way of uh, using um, a wireless connection without a wireless function. Yes. And that was quite tricky. So I think this one is far easier I, in order to have I, a remote uh, uh, release of uh, the, the shooting function. You're absolutely right. And uh, recently I uploaded some photographs with this while I was testing it out because it is a new product. And uh, some of my family were actually saying how sharp and, you know, the, the photographs were for a camera phone. And I said, well, it's actually not from a camera phone. It's from the Lumix SZ5 via. You shouldn't tell that, that, that people. That's what I'm... I think it's, I'm, I'm going to get one of you the SZ5. To, yeah. I'm going to get one of these. And then I'm going to pretend it's my <laughs> smartphone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry for that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pia, for your question. Coming to the next one by a guest who would like to know, what creative effects do your cameras have? Okay, well, each camera has uh, a varied amount of effects and scene modes. Uh, most recently with the new G5, the GF5, we now have uh, more modes where we can do things like star filter. So where you take a photograph, everything will illuminate to have all the sharp, bright areas that look like stars, basically. We also have one touch color, your favorite from the other day. So before editing, normally when you take a photograph, say... It was on the G5 that we that was on the G5. on the G5. So normally, uh, say, for example, you had a rose, uh, a red colored rose that you wanted to photograph and have all the background black and white. Traditionally, you'd have to edit that at a, at a later stage. Now you can actually do it in the Lumix G5 and the GF5 uh, within the camera before you actually take the photograph. So you've got that as well. On the SZ5, for example, and the, and the uh, travel zoom cameras and most of our compacts, you have an element of scene mode such as um, landscape food mode as we had earlier. The food mode which I discovered for Dundee cake. <laughs> for delicious Dundee cake you should always use the food mode. Um, uh, uh, portrait. It, 
there's just a lot of lot of effects now that you can carry all the way through the range. Well, pretty much there's not a certain amount that you could name. It's really that it varies from camera yeah. to camera. Yeah. How many? It, it does. And for do example, have. on the G5, there are 37 modes. So why 37? Well, and four, I like something like 20, 40 or there's 23 scene modes, and then there are 14 creative modes. So, uh, but still, it's an uneven number. It's like 51. Oh, well, then maybe. Next time, we'll do 40. I don't know. <laughs> I'm there just to make sure that you have an even number of features. Okay. No matter if they're really helpful or not, just to make it even. Well, we'd, yeah. Or in that case, you should have get, uh, get rid of one of them, and then it would have been like 50. 30, yeah. All right, then uh, thank you for this question, and we're going to continue with the next one uh, by uh, Ifa Live. I'm going on a cruise holiday, and then I want a compact camera with a long zoom. What can you rec uh, recommend? Okay, a compact com camera with a long zoom. Well, the first thing I can think of straight away, Patrice. It's going to be kind of difficult just to get any of these, or we just have video cameras. Oh, no, actually, we can walk around. We it's can walk around, yeah. It's our yeah. booth. We, we can leave it here yeah, behind. That can, yeah, we can. We can. We'll be back. Uh, what we yeah, can do is... Show me a compact camera with a long zoom. Follow me. Let's go around here. Mark, I follow you everywhere. So we're going past here the range of camcorders we saw the other day so the handheld active camcorders yes there's even our z10000 that's our semi-pro uh, 3d camcorder as well technology taken from that into our uh, consumer three MOS sensors yep then we've got our entry level cameras here our family style oh, sorry, fs sorry. which no, is uh, no, 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 as it says family no, no. lx no. fz and yeah. then we come to the tz series so here in germany we have the tz31 um, the UK, it's the TZ30. Now ha, this, ha, ha, we have one more than you do. Yes, one. There we go. <laughs> um, the TZ30 has a 20 times optical zoom. Yep. So that will extend intelligently to 40 times. So that's the processing going on after the actual lens itself. So my recommendation to Efa Live is that for a long zoom to get those, you know, buildings on a mountainside that maybe you're on a ship and you can't get off at uh, that stage or some uh, real nice uh, landmarks that you want to capture with that zoom. Again, the lens quality is very, very high. It's a Leica lens, and that will extend to 20 times optical zoom. Okay, so this would be then the DMC TZ, TZ sorry, 31. Sorry, TZ30, not 20. Did I say 20? 30 if she's from the UK, yeah, TZ, that person. TZ30, TZ31 in, in Germany. Only in Germany, it doesn't mean like well, in, in Europe. in Europe. Wait a minute, you're telling me the rest of Europe has like a 31, but you have a 30? We have a 30, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm not going to ask why. No. no. Yes, actually, I'm going to. Okay, I'm oh, not no, going to no, ask. No, please. Uh, if I live, so uh, thank you for this uh, question. This was your answer. It's the, except you from the UK, it should be a 31 then. Okay. 31, okay, I got it. I'm going to ask you afterwards anyway. Okay. You, know that. you do, you do. Obviously. Toby, 1209, would like to know how easy is it to set up a Wi-Fi connection with a Lumix camera if I have a long, long password? A long password? Hmm. Um. <laughs> oh, the thing is, no, if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, because um, that's what I tried earlier, the way that it works with the SZ5 is that you just go through the settings, and actually it's the camera that gives you um, a password that you have to type in in order to get connected to either your tablet PC or your smartphone. I understand the question now. So you're absolutely right. When you actually set up the Wi-Fi uh, networking on the camera itself, the SZ5, it will prompt you and give you a, a SSID location. So that means that it will appear on your home network, your yep. router. Um, and at the same time, it will give you an encrypted password that's unique to that camera itself. So you find that, that's your password, you put it in, and then you can control remotely with your other devices or smart transfer, as we've just seen through the PC, or send it to your television as well. So it's a, ma it's a matter, of, I understand it's also a matter of security because it's yes. better to have a camera that knows where it's going to yes. send its picture so it to. it sits on your network. Yeah. You allow it to sit on your network. It's the best and safest way to do it that way around. Yes. Otherwise, you don't want your Vegas, Prince Harry type of pictures, like, you know, <laughs> sent all over the network. No, not at all. So therefore, uh, it's, it's rather easy. It's quite easy. We, we tried it out, but it's the other way around. It's not... Uh, it's like your smartphone has to get linked to the camera, and that's really easy, and not the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, but anyway, thank you, Toby, for this answer. But you never know, it's going to be a great costume, the Vegas Harry costume by next year. <laughs> well, if you like that kind of thing, I suppose so, yeah, yeah. This is going to be my thing. It's probably the reason why you have a 30 and we have a 31, because well, yeah. you have so much more fun. 
I'm, I'm going to continue gonna the whole, that one. I'm going to continue this whole thing. I'm going to carry on <laughs> the whole day. Uh, Elif, uh, 1983, we would like to know, does the Wi-Fi function in Lumix cameras also let me stream images to a VR TV? Yes, it does. We yes, just, it does. We just uh, demonstrated that. Unfortunately, it won't do it on the VT20, but it will do it on the VT50. So, uh, and all the VR arranged this year. As far as it supports swipe and share? As long as it's... As long, well, it can support... You, they, they, you know, TVs can support... Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a featured function. And That's a feature for VR, however... Um, your, you can you can uh, send it to your new Viera this year if you're looking for one or you, you're potentially buying one uh, via, yes, I'm looking via for one. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's why I'm I said look, that I'm, as an example. I'm looking for a VT50. Yeah, you can send that to your television. And uh, I've got a Blu-ray player from last year, uh, a BDT110. And as I've been uh, using this over the last few weeks for uh, my own training purposes, I send it directly to that Blu-ray player as well. So. Um, that's on last year's models, and that will be this year's. Okay, yes, you can, but so far, like the Wi-Fi function is limited is, to the yeah, SZ5. Yeah, just the SZ5. That's the SZ5. Just to make that sure. Ah, oh, but those, the, the, the nice gentleman at the IFA told me that I can do that with my G5. No, we didn't. No, no we didn't. It's just going to be... No, just the SZ5. Okay. Uh, Connie would like to know, if I don't have a connection to the Internet, does the camera remember where the picture was taken? I mean, it's more a matter of... a of a GPS function than anything else? It is. The GPS is actually controlled by the Android or the, uh, well, the smart device or the iOS device. So you can actually geotag it that way. The camera itself doesn't have that facility. Uh, if you were looking for, um, uh, you know, GPS kind of map tagging, then you, I'd recommend you go for something like a TZ20. Um, uh, sorry, TZ30. I keep saying TZ20. TZ30. Uh, or 31 if you're from Germany, uh, that will do that. And it also has on, uh, uh, mapping on the screen as well. So uh, you can actually see where you are, uh, you know, where you are in the world uh, via the TZ30. Okay, so when it comes to uh, remember where it was, either you write it down or you should take one of the GPS models as just uh, mentioned here. But anyway, thank you, Connie, for this question. Continuing with a question coming from Heiko, do your compact cameras use optical or digital zoom? Well, the cameras use both optical and digital zoom. It's my, it's my new friend here. How are you doing? Oh. No, <laughs> You're on live, live at IFA. <laughs> uh, so who's that in my bag? <laughs> famous for a few seconds. Uh, yes, the cameras have uh, optical zoom. Uh, and digital zoom. So when you get a camera such as a TZ30 that says right. on, the, on the front of the camera 20 times, that will mean it's optical. So it's using all the lenses, all the optical side of the actual camera itself. When you see something like 48 times intelligent, uh, that means that it's the processing, very similar to photo editing after a photo, uh, photograph is taken, where it's uh, sharpening up the edges, it's uh, increasing the color resolution. All the intelligent side, the processing, is doing that. Right. And then comes digital for the Panasonic Lumix cameras. So we've got also uh, digital then. You'll probably see you know, 96 times digital zoom will be quite broken up. So it, I'd recommend you use the optical and then push it again with the intelligent side because that will really give you uh, an extended zoom with good quality pictures. But coming with a 48 times zoom, I mean, that really takes a try. 48 times 48 zoom times. in that small body. So if you think about earlier, we were talking about the FZ200, which is a bridge camera with a, a, a 24 times optical zoom with a focal length of up to 600 millimeters. So the equivalent of a large camera would be around this. Mm -hmm. You think we've gone even further with our technology to actually cram that into such a small body. So I think somebody said earlier about going on holiday, what's the best zoom? Then, you know, absolutely the best choice for, for, that, kind of, uh, for, for that kind of holiday snap. TV 31. Well, well yeah, but TV you will definitely need a tripod then with this kind of uh, zoom uh, ratio. But Heiko, thank you for your question. Uh, coming now to the next one, bye. Sanjay. Sanjay would like to know, I'm going on a cruise holiday and want a compact camera with a long zoom. What can you recommend? Sanjay, is that the same question again? <laughs> it's not the same person. Uh, you could... Well, we can answer that. It doesn't necessarily okay. have to be the TZ30. Or 31. Uh, or 31. Uh, and the TZ25, which is a version just underneath it, and last year's versions, etc. They have very, very powerful zooms. The SZ5, which is a family of other SZ, SZ meaning slim zoom. Uh, you've got the SZ1, the SZ7, which are not wireless, and the SZ5, which is. They all have 10 times optical zoom. So again, the reason why they're called S is they're slim, 
so they're smaller than the TZ, but still have a, you know, a huge amount of technology in there that we've created uh, to, to, to give the customer a really good you know, zoom if they don't want to go a little bit further with uh, you know, things like GPS, 3D, et cetera, with the TZ30. Right, okay, then uh, Sanjay. And uh, for all those of you, um, you can also have, pay a, a visit to our media center where you will have the chance just to uh, see some prior segment that have been shot here at the uh, Panasonic booth. And maybe one of the questions that you were about to ask anyway, you will, uh, will be able just to find it then over there. But thank you, Mark, for this question here, or this answer to Sanjay's question. Anna would like to know, why don't Panasonic do compact with EVF? What exactly is EVF? EVF is uh, electronic viewfinder. So similar to, uh, if we move further back here, Patrice, we can show the... Like on the LX7? Like on the LX7 here. So this is an optional uh, viewfinder, EVF, that you find on the LX7. So that comes a separate purchase. But it explains um, why it's also called the LVF. It's the uh, Lumix it, viewfinder. Uh, live, live viewfinder. Live, live viewfinder. viewfinder. So you're seeing a true representation digitally uh, in the LCD is re represented in the viewfinder. Right. But um, the lady, uh, Anna, is right. We, we, there is no compact other than the Lumix LX7 we do that has uh, a viewfinder. If you want a viewfinder with, uh, say, a, a compact style into uh, a digital SLM style, then I would recommend the FZ200, which does have uh, a viewfinder, and that's the bridge camera. That's the one with the large lens of 24 times optical zoom. So, unfortunately, we don't have any viewfinders other than the LX, LX7. Which is op uh, optional. Which is optional. Optional, and you have like two um, choices, either an electronic one or an optical one. And they've got two, yes. So you've got an optical one or a, or a, uh, a live digital view, a viewfinder, yeah. or you have one built in to the actual uh, FZ200. All right, then Anna, but is there a reason why they don't have it? Uh, I mean, the question was like, why don't they have? Well, why don't they? I think... Is it discrimination of viewfinders? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Nothing against viewfinders, absolutely not. I can understand some customers find it difficult. I get this asked a lot by uh, dealers and store colleagues every, you know, a lot of the time, where well, why don't you have a viewfinder? Um, you, you get a lot of light sometimes, but that hit the LCD screen, but we do have different adjustments of brightness uh, on the LCD screen that will help reduce any glare. Um, but if you think about it as well, if we're trying then to put a compact uh, EVF in such a, a sophisticated body like a TZ30, we would have to compromise, I think, on the, on the zoom. And the whole point of that camera is, you know, the zoom as well as the other features. And then if we put one on the top, then it would just kind of make it unbalanced, hence why we brought out something like an enthusiast kind of uh, star camera, uh, the LX7. So I don't have a definitive answer why, but you know, um, this will be one of the reasons. One of the reasons why. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anna. Um, I hope you're happy with that. Um, coming to the next question. Bye. Moin. Uh, Moin's like hello. It's like, uh, but it's a hot topic. Sending photos to Vieras. We talked about that topic earlier. That's something that could be also be found at the media center then, because yep. we even demonstrated within we've this demonstrated segment it. how you can easily yep. uh, share with your Viera TV. Um, other than that, I mean, what we didn't show, but which is also possible, simply taking out of the, the SD card, because most of the modern Vieras all came with an SD card slot. And this will be another or pretty much traditional way of sharing pictures on your Viera TV, as far as I know. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, a new, unique element of the Panasonic Viera TVs and has been for a number of years is the SD card slot. So again, ease of use. So you can take the photograph or video out of the SD card, out of the camera, straight into the side of the television and view your pictures back. And not only that, Patrice, obviously with our audio visual, uh, you know, Blu-ray recorders, Blu-ray players, um, uh, home cinemas uh, systems, they have SD card slots where you can put them in as well. So you no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying because it hasn't been really for that long that television are coming also with SD card slots, but it really seems that people have uh, seem to have uh, forgotten that this is also a, a way to do so Absolutely. because therefore you don't need to have extra cables on you yeah. and just like hook it up to the camera and then to the television, anything like that. So uh, there's a way, the SD5, just to do that uh, wirelessly. Nice. When you do have a television that supports uh, sm uh, swipe and share, uh, other than that, the SD card should be also an option.
But thank you anyway for your question. In between, again, we have a poll. Uh, it's about, I want to upload my images too. Uh, it's, that uh, fits quite the question we had earlier. Uh, I want to upload my images to Facebook, my Tumblr blog, or Instagram. Uh, we have uh, four more seconds to go. I mean, it's a, it's a tricky it's a tricky question because Instagram now, after this uh, one billion dollar paycheck, uh, now belongs to Facebook. So it's pretty much almost the same, but just all, uh, almost not really. But uh, apparently, eighty three percent decided that Facebook would be the number one uh, address just to send up your pictures. So I wonder where the other few percent because I, there was like zero on Instagram for some reason. Probably because like what I just said. Instagram, anyway, is part of Facebook. And now, again, uh, the network is down. May I change? So let me have the old school sheet here. Olgierd, um, if I take pictures underwater, does the GPS function store the location? It depends, like, how deep. Well, with the, um, with the FT4, uh, it will... The, 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 uh, it has GPS built in, so that should still operate again. You're looking at 12, 12, uh, 12 feet. So, yeah, it depends how deep you go. You can get a water housing. You can go even further, which is 40, 40 meters. Right. Uh, the TZ30 doesn't go underwater, but there is a housing unit for that as well. So it's quite a large unit. It has to be because not only to seal the, the camera itself, but also to allow you to still to zoom. Yeah, but, so, but, but also what's really important to know is that um, prior that a GPS system works properly, the global positioning system, yeah. it takes the coverage of satellites. Yes. So, so if I, I, I the think, satellite cannot find you, yeah. then the camera will have a yeah. hard time just to know for itself where, where it's really heading to. It's not going to be sufficient to tell your camera that. We are here here in the water, actually it's exchanging itself, it's exchanging data with the satellites up there, and as uh, soon as they can have no access to the camera anymore, then you want to be able just to uh, actually store your information where you are, actually. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a key key element of, of uh, key feature of the camera itself, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very sophisticated, and about one million landmark locations with the GPS as well, so uh, I think we said do, exactly. Would that be a, a, a chance? Let's say, for example, I'm somewhere where I don't have, for some reason, no satellite access. Could I actually individually put these? When I do know where I'm at, could I also mark that? There are some elements the of, of editing that, but the, the system is quite sophisticated, so it should be able to actually, um, if you're away for a few minutes and then come back, it should find you. Because, like you said, it's it's constantly looking for the satellites above and uh, it's pretty accurate as well um, you know it, it could find us very very quickly here if we had you know had that on today okay. so I'll get I hope that you're satisfied with this answer uh, we're gonna continue with a question coming from Dita is there a limit to the picture size I can upload via Wi-Fi no there isn't um, you can no conversion is happening no, no not at all uh, you're actually it, you can control that via the camera itself so the SZ5 you can cat control that and you can actually alter it in the menu system in the uh, device that you're using to control it so uh, dependent if you're sending it for say file sharing family or friends or work for example you probably want to have a 0.3 megapixel because it will transfer very quickly uh, but of course if you're using it to uh, send for printing uh, for any kind of other reason then you know yeah it'll do it'll do all the, the SZ5, SZ5, the SZ5 has 10 megapixel. 10 Is that megapixel. going to be sufficient for big printings? Well, 10 megapixel, I think, will probably give you something like possibly A, A2 to A3 printing. So, yeah, 10 million still are going to be very good. But again, if you're using quite, a, if you've taken quite a grainy shot and you're quite creative, then 10 million would be fine because obviously it's going to be a, a little bit noisy anyway. So, uh, for standard photography, for family sh shots. Uh, in the home and holiday snaps, that kind of stuff. Then, between two million and ten million, that you you know you can control within the camera is more more than sufficient. Okay, so at the moment we could take there is none. Okay, let's switch back to high tech. <laughs> I love that at the IFA, and it's a hot topic. Uh, William and Andreas, uh, Andreas Ukis, yes, ah, yeah. my new friend, yeah. as I discovered uh, this morning. Um, smartphone connectivity would be the hot topic. Okay, smartphone connectivity. Well, 
So far, it's just like one model that supports that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the SZ5 does connect to your smartphone, uh, smart device, uh, tablet, uh, different brands. So uh, you can control that remotely and you can take photographs with the device. So you can have the camera like we showed earlier. Uh, my colleague Kevin had the camera away from us while we were chatting. And I took a photograph with that camera. Kevin never touched the camera at all. So uh, I zoomed in, zoomed out. Uh, took the photograph, and if we then had the programs installed on the device, we could then send it directly to a social networking site and share with with family and friends. Yeah, and, and also when it comes to this function, uh, remotely be able just to use the camera. Um, I just heard that at the press conference, some, let's say, some stereotypical men would come up with, oh, yeah, they, they, they can uh, hide their camera in a well, woman's locker, anything like that. No. Um, the benefit of having such a function, for example, how I see it, is let's take something like Instagram where you upload yes. pictures. And to be honest, uh, the camera included in my smartphone is rather limited. So it's quite a huge advantage, for example, just, just to take a picture somewhere of something with the actually the better resolution of the S5 uh, and then transfer it wirelessly to the phone and then upload it in there to the service. This will be one of the options. Or let's say uh, there are just the two of us who would like to take a picture of us, um, but we, had, we don't want to rely on, on the timer function. So we rather have this remote that, so we can check on either the tablet PC or on your phone. Okay, this is going to look good. Is your wife going to be happy about the look? Is my mom going to be yeah. happy about the look? And then. Yeah. Let's go for it. And you're about my height now as well, which is really good. So Something like excellent. that. These are like two uh, possibilities that yep. you could use uh, the connectivity uh, for that phone. You can. Um, and I think, you, you know, when you said about the timer, the timer element of any camera is, is good fun. You can put it on the side of a wall and take the photograph. You what, but, but you, you don't you, know what the camera's looking you at. You don't know what the camera's looking at. So you could have your tablet or your smart device there with you and actually say, oh, actually, we need to move here. Uh, and like you said, a little bit lower uh, and so on. So and, and you can have real, you can have great fun with it. So I'm not that small. <laughs> totally. No, I just wanted to give you like the feeling what it's like. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for that hot topic. We will continue now with uh, a question from... Oh, bye. Absolute beginner. Oh, by the way, it's a German uh, rep band. Uh, this would be my first camera. Is it suitable for an absolute beginner, a novice? Yeah, I mean, there's no, there is no restrictions on any of our cameras. Um, whether you're per looking at purchasing a G series uh, mirrorless camera, you have the intelligent auto button. So even though some customers may be quite daunted by lenses and things like that. The whole point of the different differential lenses is to get more creative and do different aspects of photography. But when you press that blue button on each of our cameras on the G series al alone, it allows you, it, the processing takes over. So you've got the confidence of ease of use and understanding the cameras. So the cameras, as we've seen throughout the week, are telling the, the person, the, the consumer, the customer, that how to actually operate it. What does it do when you take the photograph? It gives you tips. So from that point of view, the SZ, uh, the SZ series, including the wireless SZ5, is within that, that, uh, that, that, that category. So that the customer, if they don't want to use wireless, they can leave it alone. If they want to have a few scene modes and have the confidence that intelligent auto and the processing is going to you know, help them take good photographs, then absolutely, well, absolute beginner. Yes, you, it, it, would, absolutely. it would fit what you're looking for. And here is your answer. Coming to the next question by uh, Milan Zeven. Can you edit pictures in to the camera before sharing, within the camera without sharing? You, you, you could, yes. You could use the playback menu within the system to edit. So uh, you could change uh, the aspect ratio, uh, you can't necessarily retouch the photograph, so that's a key feature on the G5. Uh, sorry, the um, uh, where am I? LX. Sorry, the LX7 and the FZ200 is when you take a photograph. I can actually use the effects afterwards again. You can again. use the effects afterwards. So let's say we we took a photograph of the big screens in front of us, and it was too blue because there's a quite a huge, a large blue tinge to the arena. We could then change the color if we wanted to. So we could do that afterwards. Um, but we can't actually uh, do it on the SZ5. I was just about to show you guys. This is the uh, Alex 7 that does that? 
The LX7 does that, so yeah, you can add... And the FZ220? FC, uh, FZ200, uh, which is this one here. So we're here. We, so we were showing that earlier, what you can actually do, take the photograph, and that's the same, you, you took a photograph of a, a landscape with blue sky and uh, green uh, scenery. Uh, you could then, if you wanted to just have the blue sky, you could edit it so the green turns black and white, and the blue would stay blue. Or you can do it before you. Take oh, you already the said that the well. Z200 and the uh, LX7 are able to do that. I was just about to say, like, oh, then I could use the same effect on the G5, but no, no. it's not. No, you can't uh, do any retouching on the G5. Okay. Afterwards. Too bad. But thank you for that question. That was your answer. Coming out to the next one. Bye. And again, the network is down. Shall I get my, my old school? Replacement tablet PC. <laughs> um, if I have face recognition on, will the Wi-Fi connection also send that data with the picture? Face recognition. Uh, uh, yes, it does. It's about the cursor. It's like the the, the, the square that's around your face. That does come I, up. I I saw that one. Yeah. While we were taking the picture of us. Yes, because it's still what you're doing is you're just accessing the camera as if it was in your hand. So yes, you can access uh, that, and it will come up. So. That's what Intelligent Auto does. It'll focus on the face. It'll make sure you're, uh, when the photo is taken that you've got a sharp contours, you're in focus, and the background is, is kind of compensated for. And, and then that data will be sent directly to, saved in the camera and in the, uh, the, the, the smart device as well. Yeah, but because I think I can, in general it was about the, uh, the fact that once like, the face recognition is on, she might have thought that it might be, get lost on the way being, uh, being wireless or that person. I don't even know if it, uh, I don't know anything about the gender. Um, but I think this is what I just witnessed that it's actually this, the, everything that you would see on the back of the camera, yes. on the live view, uh, is also to be seen then on either your tablet PC or your smartphone. So you pretty much have all the information that the camera gives you in the first place. That's the beauty of the remote function um, of uh, being able just to shoot wirelessly. So thank you for that uh, question. We're now going to come to the next one. A question by James Bell. Oh, do you know Fringe TV series? I do, yes. Ah, Isn't yes. James Bell one of the characters there? Uh, Will I, I think so, yeah. That's William, the, yeah. Yes, James Bell. William Bell is the other is the Bell. Is the other. father, yeah. 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 James Bell uh, would like to know, can I exchange photos among other Lumix via Wi-Fi? No. But no, then again, can I exchange pictures in between two as that fives? Would that be possible? No. Uh, you can't, yeah, you can't have one and send the other one to, to the other. That's unfortunately not a feature for that, so you can't. It's just literally one device on your network. I mean, you, you, you could have, you know, another smart device. If you're fortunate to have two right. SZ5s in the home, you could, you could access one smart device with one camera and another smart device with the other, but you can't actually talk to each other from one SZ5 So there's no another. line back. For example, when I have a picture on my, my, my tablet PC or my smartphone, I wouldn't be able just to send uh, the picture or any other picture to yeah. the camera? Uh, you can't send anything from here to the to camera itself, okay. no. So at the moment, James, this is not possible, but thank you for your question. Continuing with a question coming from a Vegan, a jo a vegan John. Can I operate your compact in manual mode like a DSLR? Uh, y yes, you can. Um, just like our digital SL uh, uh, mirrorless cameras, you've got uh, on the TZ30, you've got creative mode, so you've got yep. manual control, so you've got program, aperture, shutter speed, and manual. Um, on the TZ30, you've also got an element of uh, exposure compensation as well. So if you want to make the picture brighter or darker, you can do that. And that's all done by uh, the menu uh, controlling buttons. And then cameras such as the FT4 have an element of, uh, which is the active camera, um, the underwater camera, you've got elements of manual control within it. Not full manual control, but, but some. So you can be a little bit more creative if you don't want to use the uh, intelligent processing that's going on there. So yes, you can. So Vegan John, yes, you can. And thank you for that question. Coming to the next one by a guest. I, I already have a smartphone that already uploads photos to social networking sites. Why would I need a Wi-Fi enabled camera? I just gave two examples. Picture quality. Oh, yes. Picture quality, lens quality. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we all know that smartphones are phones with cameras. 
uh, cameras with great lenses, a great uh, processing, uh, and they look similar to, to camera phones, so they're lightweight, they're compact. You've got, you've got high quality in a camera that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, smart devices, um, you know, because of their size, they're so small, may not have that, that same quality. Just to name a few of the the reason why I mean it's not it's not a necessity it's up to you what you want to do absolutely, with it yeah absolutely I, I actually heard that some people are using the smartphones to make phone calls yeah do they really so, yeah. is that what they for the freedom of choice <laughs> so it's all yours but we I think gave you uh, at least another example why or some few examples why it's going to be a great idea or it is already a great idea so uh, coming now to the next uh, one which is over that was the final question for this segment. But I would like to announce a very special interview that we're going to have tomorrow. Are you familiar with this, this name, sir? I am, yes. Yep. It's Kazu, uh, Kazuhiro uh, Tsuga, which is the president of the Panasonic Corporation. I just have to read it again because I just wanted to make sure that I got it right. The president of Panasonic Corporation. So the big boss will be coming uh, tomorrow for an interview. And we're looking, well, I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to see that. We're going to talk a bit about the philosophy that comes with Panasonic, but more towards that subject tomorrow than here uh, for Panasonic Live at IFA 2012. But thank you, Mark. Patrice, it's been a pleasure. For the segment, Thank you very much. Uh, we have to delete, first of all, this last picture you took of me, but that's a different story. Um, we will be back uh, at uh, 4 o'clock when it comes to Viera and Future Craft. So uh, see you later, and thank you for your attention so far, Patrice Budibela for Panasonic Live at IFA 2012.